The first atomic clock was made at the National Physical Laboratory and has been used there since 1955 for the accurate measurement of time and frequency. This short film is intended to show how it works and how it is used to calibrate the quartz clocks which are still used as the working standards. The essential parts are not too complicated and the principle is easily explained. In this schematic diagram, the vertical scale has been greatly expanded for clarity. Now the chamber is highly evacuated so that atoms can travel its length without collisions. The oven is heated to produce a beam of cesium atoms which are in some ways like tiny magnets and can be deflected by a non-uniform magnetic field. In the first magnet, they are deflected in opposite ways according to their polarity. They then pass through a region of alternating magnetic field produced by the radio frequency oscillator. Some of the atoms are selected by a slit and pass through a second magnet where they are deflected farther away from the detector and amplifier. Here we see the paths of the atoms without the radio frequency oscillator. No polarity changes occur in the center region and the atoms are deflected away from the detector. When the alternating field from the radio frequency oscillator is applied and when its frequency is exactly equal to the natural frequency of cesium, the atoms respond and reverse their polarity. They are then deflected in the opposite direction towards the detector, where they are converted into an electric current and amplified. The radio frequency oscillator is thus set to the frequency of the atoms. This is the main beam chamber down which the atoms travel. Here are the first deflecting magnet, the second deflecting magnet, and the detector. The alternating field is fed through a waveguide to the beam chamber. Large coils compensate for the Earth's magnetic field, which would otherwise produce a small error. The position of the oven can be adjusted by micrometer controls operating through the wall of the vacuum chamber. The oven consists of a stainless steel block having a number of narrow channels through which the atoms emerge as a narrow beam. In this experimental clock, the magnets can also be adjusted to the best position. The pole pieces are specially shaped to give a non-uniform field. At the far end of the beam chamber, there is a further micrometer for adjusting the position of the detector. The detector consists of a strip of tungsten, which when operating becomes red hot and converts the atoms into positive ions, which are attracted to a collector plate. guide leads from the beam chamber to the radio frequency oscillator and other electronic equipment. The clock is operated by altering the frequency of the oscillator through a small range. The number of atoms reaching the detector increases 
and the frequency is set to give a maximum beam current. A button is pressed and the dial readings give the error of the working standard. A complete measurement takes a few minutes and the result is accurate to one part in 10,000 million. The precision of an atomic clock is most easily increased by making the atoms travel further. A new standard at the NPL, based on the experience gained with the experimental model, is therefore being built. It is 17 feet long. The cover has now been removed, showing the structure holding the various components, including a magnetic screen. When the components have been installed and adjusted, the cover is lowered and bolted down. The oven is similar to that seen before, but is larger and contains more grooves for the escape of the cesium atoms. Having been filled, it is closed, sealed up, placed on a kinematic carriage and bolted into position. The chamber is evacuated, and in order to obtain the very high vacuum required, it is cooled by a long cylinder now being filled with liquid nitrogen. Experiments show that this new clock should be five times as accurate as the experimental model, which has already enabled us to measure frequency and intervals of time far more accurately and far more easily than could ever be achieved by astronomical observations of the rotation of the Earth.